and good afternoon uh, to the participants who are watching this live session so ladies and gentlemen and esteemed colleagues welcome to today's session on additive manufacturing past present and future in this engaging presentation we embark on a fascinating journey uh, through the evolution of additive manufacturing exploring its transformative impact across the various sectors from its early days as a novel method for rapid prototyping to its uh, uh, current status as a cornerstone of modern manufacturing additive manufacturing has redefined the paradigm of design and production and innovation we begin by delving into into the uh, historical development of additive manufacturing and tracing its roots and the milestones that have marked its growth this a uh, retro perspective look provides a solid foundation to appreciate the advancements and the shifts in manufacturing uh, philosophies that additive technologies have introduced this session is uh, designed to provide a comprehensive overview of additive manufacturing from its inception to the innovation the device whether um, you are a seasoned expert or uh, new to the field this presentation will offer valuable insights into the past present and future of additive manufacturing and highlighting its a pivotal role uh, in driving forward to the manufacturing industry and join us as we explore the remarkable journey of additive manufacturing and its boundless potential to revolutionize how we create and build and innovate so before we start with uh, mr nibun session i would like to give some short introduction about him so we are thrilled to welcome uh, mr nibun nail as our esteemed guest speaker today as a scientist at the indian space research organization mr nail brings uh, with him 3 years of dedicated experience in additive manufacturing technologies uh, with a focus on aerospace applications he a graduate in mechanical engineering from the esteemed birla institute of technology and science blani one of the india's six institutes of eminence He embodies the pinnacle of academic and professional excellence. Mr. Nail uh, holds the prestigious membership with the Indian Institute of Metals and the American Society of Mechanical Engineers, and underscoring his commitment uh, to the advancement of mechanical engineering. His expertise spans generative design and process simulations and additive manufacturing, and aiming to create uh, innovative and smart. cost effective and personalized products notably uh, in january 2021 he was chosen by the student academic cell at pits planning to speak at the core placement talk where he guided over 100 mechanical engineering students towards exploring industrial opportunities mr nail's passion for, uh, for uh, sharing knowledge and fostering the next generation of engineers makes him an inspirational figure in the field of additive manufacturing at the end i would like to introduce to the motto of mr nibun innovating the future through additive manufacturing so i would like to hand over this session to mr nibun and also thanks a lot for joining us today and over to you sir uh, thank you very much for that warm introduction uh, i would just like to confirm whether i am audible yeah sure sir yeah so thank you and uh, welcome everybody so, to this uh, today's lecture on additive manufacturing uh, i welcome you all uh, this lecture has been kept for any one who is interested in science and engineering not particularly subscribing to the field uh, i have tried to bring out the opportunities the looking uh, at the past present and the future to better connect the dots and to see what this technology has to offer for us collectively and also what skills should we develop so uh, we will first briefly go about the what how why and when of the technology to understand about its basic principles and once we are uh, done with that we'll also talk about the skills and opportunities which lies in this technology and i have coupled it with practical examples to aid the understanding process and to make the session more lively so i welcome you all and with that uh, Uh, without any further ado let's get started so sorry for interruption you switch on your camera no problem sir okay just a second yeah okay
Uh, whether my camera is working, can you confirm? Yeah, yes, sir. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. So, uh, let's get into additive manufacturing. So, when we talk about additive manufacturing, we basically refers to a family of manufacturing technologies and processes uh, that are characterized by sequential addition of materials to a pre-existing layer or on a substrate, and this fabrication process directly takes from a CAD model as an input file. So starting off from a 3D model, we can realize individual components, we can realize prototypes, certain tools, and even entire complex uh, assemblies without requiring any specific tooling related to the object geometry. Uh, we will delve into every word what uh, is presented here to have a better context of what this technology is. But First, we have to compare it with the existing technologies in order to understand what it offers and uh, what is the novelty of this technology. So manufacturing processes are of varied types, but they could be classified into three major philosophies. That could be subtractive, formative, and additive. So when we talk about subtractive technologies, so we start off with a block of material and then we get down to the required component by machining of the excess material. So this is a simplistic method. It, uh, the costs are not that high. The waste reduction, uh, the waste produced in these methods are high since you will end up generating a lot of machine chips and material which you have to remove in order to get your final part. So these technologies are not very effective in terms of what we call buy to fly ratio. That is what you are procuring and what is ultimately going into your application. So because of the associated uh, wastages and uh, we have other technologies that we will now look into the second philosophy of manufacturing processes would form the formative process so here you can see the yellow color block so this represents the initial material that we start off with so we start off with some excess material and through some thermo mechanical working that is either by heating it to a very high temperature close to its melting point and then applying excessive loads to deform it into the required shape geometry, we are fabricating the components. The advantage of such processes are that these yield in a very high material quality and surface finish. And once the process is optimized, the cost is very low uh, for producing larger volumes of such uh, components. So, but the challenges involved here are, uh, any change with respect to the object geometry would require uh, optimization in all the preceding steps from choosing the master reference, that is the starting material, as well as the processing parameters like load temperatures, etc. Also, since it is a forming process, so there are only limited number of complex features that we can create with the required precision and accuracy. So the third category of the manufacturing processes, which we will talk in detail, are the additive process. These differ from the earlier two philosophies as here we start off by building the materials in a layered fashion and the material is selectively deposited at the point where it is needed. So there is minimal wastage and for producing parts in low volumes, this is the most cost effective uh, technique. Also the advantage comes here is uh, that since because of the philosophy of printing it in a layer by layer, we can achieve large complex features since uh, at a time we have to focus on the cross-sectional printing of the object. So uh, this provides flexibility to the designers to create parts which are otherwise impossible to create by the other two processes. Now some of the real world analogies of these processes would include, so the art forms uh, through the wood structures, so the wood art forms, the cave wall paintings. In these uh, cases, we start off with a material and then we chisel it down to give the final shape. So these would uh, constitute under the subtractive manufacturing processes. 
the second uh, form will be the formative where we can take the examples of forging of swords so as i told we start off with a material that is larger than what is required and then we do the thermo processing uh, thermo mechanical working in order to obtain the shape therefore the thermo uh, mechanical working induces changes in the microstructural level which uh, will lead to a more densified material a material with more enhanced properties and thus these uh, parts find application in defense and military uses primarily the third process uh, would i have taken inspiration from nature uh, as you can see the ant colonies the ant would use uh, its surrounding sand and its bodily fluids to fabricate its uh, nests and that is also being done in a laid by laid fashion plus you can see a lot of openings that would be very difficult to form if you go by the other two routes so the point that i want to bring here is additive manufacturing has always been omnipresent in the nature from the spiders building their webs to uh, the birds building their nests high up in the mountain wherever there is a resource constraint and we have to use the material wisely to obtain our functional requirement so nature has evolved and it has created these examples uh, which we have taken inspiration and in fact the other two philosophies though they have existed for thousands of years this additive manufacturing technologies uh, we have a 100 years of roughly research and development in this field so starting off with the conceptualization of this technology the first patents were filed in 1920s but the inspiration the philosophy of building things in an edit, in a additive fashion was actually taken from a french sculptor Uh, so he worked on the the scanning techniques of his sculptural models how it would look under different cross sections and then while printing it on a sheet he glued it up to form his uh, sculptural pieces so this is a remarkable example and this in a way explains of how this process works following this uh, there were a lot of uh, developments uh, to create parts through this technology at uh, prototype levels and a couple of technologies actually aided to make this feasible including that of development of lasers development of scanning techniques and development of uh, photo the, the chemistry behind this because it earlier started off uh, through the vat process which i will explain what it is but the major developments took place in the 1980s when there was a increase funding and emphasis on developing such technologies with respect to the cold war and it was a japanese scientist who was finally able to create a first form of commercial 3d printer and later many research institutes and many industries picked up and they contributed to bring down the cost the associated cost of these technologies and that resulted in 2000s we had a boom in this emergence of this technologies in uh, its adoption where we not only had multiple startups and multiple players coming and innovating but also innovating in different ways so the process not only saw increased adoption but a larger diversification yielding up to more than 50 kinds of processes which were uh, classified in the umbrella term of em technology and the significant growth was finally recognized and in 2014 the founder of the world economic forum classified additive manufacturing as one of the key elements of the fourth industrial revolution so with respect to additive manufacturing it goes on by a couple of names these are some of them and every name has got its associated meaning so the first two names the 3d printing and stereolithography this helps us in visualizing of what this technology is so for anyone the best way to understand what this technology is is to draw an analogy to our printers our printers print in a two dimensional sheet of paper we extend this philosophy while to build objects while printing them in a layered by layered fashion in three dimension the second word lithography stands for making uh, art forms on a sheet of paper so here we are making objects in 3d so we call it stereolithography 
so the first two terms are uh, usually used by professionals to uh, better understand and better visualize the process but this is a technology that is widely used and the first two terms do not talk about the physics of the process so in terms of engineering aspects we also call it as layered manufacturing and digital manufacturing since when we talk of layer we are talking about the inherent physics of how we are making the objects the printing has uh, is taking place in a layered by layered fashion directly from a cad model and similarly when we talk about the cad model it is the development phase of the cad is in a digital form any changes and any iterations that we do are mostly done in the virtual form therefore this is a virtual way of manufacturing uh, virtual way of not only manufacturing but uh, consolidating the final designs which could be then built into physical products so it is also called as digital manufacturing the other two terms are more application oriented as uh, a free form geometry is a geometry that is non conventional uh, unlike uh, let's say a cylinder or a prism or a cuboid which are the typical geometries we see so a free form geometry would be deviating from stretch structures and the novelty of this technology lies since we are printing again in layers so we can build very complicated and intricate geometries so the solid free form fabrication covers this technology in a more uh, conveys a more application oriented part of this technology the other part since we are dealing with uh, uh, the mo moderations are not being done at the physical hardware level but in a digital form so this technology is very much suited for rapid prototyping and for uh, generating tools that are personalized and therefore it is also referred as rapid prototyping tooling and manufacturing so to typically there goes a certain number of steps there is a typical flow chart for am process which i have presented in this slide so it starts off with the material development so for the printing technologies that we have we can have the material in a powdered form or in forms of filaments and wires or in form of a liquid once we are chosen with this material which is also determined by the process that we are going to adapt we go on for the conceptual design of the part and which is followed by the stl manipulation now it is um, important to understand what stl files means so when we talk of images we talk of pixels so images are comprising of pixels which stores the information of the images in a similar way when we are dealing with 3d objects instead of pixels we are going for uh, triangles so these triangles comprising of three points will give the morphology of a object at a particular point so if like you can see this chess piece if uh, you you would be finding some patterns that goes throughout so that would constitute the resolution of the part so for getting and fabricating parts with higher resolutions we have to manipulate the pixels accordingly further stl manipulation would also cover the direction in which you will be printing these parts since that will also be important if you print this check uh, chess piece in the vertical direction you will have the subsequent layers which will be printing will be supported by the previously print or the substrate layers but if you print it in horizontal direction you will get a large overhang structures so that could result in improper fusing of the material and thus would call for requires of uh, you it would require design of support in order to keep the material intact during printing so the stl manipulation part covers with deciding the appropriate resolution which will determine the surface finish of the printing part deciding on the appropriate build orientation which will decide uh, the direction of printing and also it helps in designing the supports so wherever we have overhang structures there will be certain supports that we will need to design so once we are done with the design part we can feed the cad model directly into a 3d printer and then we have to do the optimization for selection of the printing parameters 
for most of the common materials uh, common metals ceramics composites certain parameters are already optimized so based on the selection of the printing route and the input material we feed in the appropriate material data and the cad model geometry into the 3d printer and this results in printing of the as printed uh, part which may not have the best surface finish which in this case okay there was no requirement for support but if you see this part this act as a overhang structure so it may have called for a support in order to keep it intact during printing and ensure that it doesn't fall off so once we have the as printed part from the printer we go for post processing operations that would include maybe some final machining removal of support structures and if we have to induce some additional strength to it we go for certain post processing operations like uh, hipping now when we talk about am technologies as i said the development of this technologies led to uh, creation of large number of technologies uh, through both industry research academia and on to the startup collaborations so today we have over 50 technologies that classify under the am tag and it all could be clubbed into seven philosophies as per the astm so this slide presents the different seven philosophies the technologies in the philosophies uh, the starting material that we require for adopting the technologies and what are the materials that could be printed uh, by the use of these technologies so there are seven basic kinds of additive manufacturing processes these are binder jetting material extrusion direct energy deposition powder bed fusion sheet lamination material jetting and vat uh, photo polymerization so under these uh, technologies also we have several kinds of machines which are slightly different in their approach of printing the object but are similar in terms of the physics that goes behind it so based on th that we have certain technologies under these uh, seven pillars of additive manufacturing and then in the next row we talk about the input material that is uh, fed into these machines for printing and the last and the most important part the range of materials that could be realized through this process so this technology is disruptive this technology is still in a evolutionary phase and you can see the number of materials it has uh, reached its span so right from thermoplastic to polymers metal ceramic composite to even biological tissues uh, then food sand medicines concrete so there are a lot of uh, materials that are today covered through these printing technologies so now we will briefly take up these technologies one by one uh, starting off with binder jetting so in the binder jetting as you can see from the animation we have a pr uh, printer head that uh, basically is depositing a binder liquid on a powder bed so wherever it is required so in a cross section as per the object geometry a printer head will be dispensing a liquid binder which will be consolidating the loose powder in that specific layer and once this deposition is done this is then later cured in a furnace and that would result in the permanent or the metallurgical bonding of these uh, binded parts so what we get directly off from a binder printing jet is basically green compacts which are later sintered into a furnace to obtain the final part so the advantage of this kind of printing technology is that it does not involve melting therefore we can deal with a lot of metals and ceramics that Uh, would require high temperatures and thus complicated machine design so since here we are obtaining green parts so we can the number of materials that it is compatible with is large second major advantage is that we can print sand molds directly through this methods for casting so as we see like in automobile industries and a lot of commercial industries engine blocks and a lot of strong parts are for 
form through foundry route and foundry route would involve a preparation of a sand mold and through conventional means there is only a, a certain complexity that we could attain through in the sand molds but if we are able to print it then we can form intricate channels which are otherwise not possible particularly with respect to sand printing we do not require any further post processing so it is a one step process but if we are printing with other materials then it might call for some final machining the next process will be a material extrusion process so here actually we are having two spools of materials and they both are being fed up into a nozzle the one of the spool will be the building material and the other spool will be the support structure so as you can see uh, in the animation in a particular cross section we will be printing in a layered by layered fashion of the build material wherever we find the overhang structures we would be adding certain support part to it so yeah you can see in the animation these are the two nozzles which are uh, these are two materials in a single nozzle the black material will be the printing material and the white material will be the support material and as we are printing the build platform is descending uh, making room for the next print layer and once we have the as printed part the support structures are removed either by breaking them off from the structure or through dissolving them if uh, we have appropriately chosen the support structure the advantages here is it is a very simple technology for printing material it is not very accurate but it uh, because of its simplicity we can print up to large sizes therefore through this technologies a lot of bridges and a lot of civil structures have also been printed including homes but there are uh, associated disadvantages since this printing is taking place in a layered by layered fashion and the fusion of the material takes place in both direction in the xy plane of its printing as well as uh, by the descending of the build platform so the uh, then the process in itself induces an isotropy and further since we are printing of uh, with some wire as a material so there is only a specific level of detailing that we can achieve that would be similar to the wire dimensions so we will end up getting step structures which would require final machining to form the final part the third process will be direct energy deposition it is a very famous process so here we are directly transferring energy to the input material in a in a inert environment and this transfer of energy is done precisely at the point where the material is required to be melt and deposited so it gives a very high precision since it is a nozzle based method so multi axis machine compatibility is possible which results in high precision of the printing part and under this nozzle will be the printing material the heat source and the inert environment so the inert environment contributes for accommodating materials that are otherwise not possible to print because of their oxygen sensitivity such as titanium alloys the disadvantage here is uh, the cost is high and the resolution is poor so even if you can see closely in the printed part you will see the layers very clearly so it will call for a final uh, op uh, machining operation plus uh, because of the printing mechanism itself Uh, in providing support structures is very difficult here so the next technology is powder bed fusion this is uh, probably the most popular printing method uh, in case of metals in this case uh, we use a laser as a energy source which can precisely fuse a cross section to build the uh, the geometry of the part that lies on a powder bed and this powder bed again like the laser powder bed fusion it is systematically descended to allow for the fresh layer of powder to fill in and then the laser will be printing on the uh, subsequent cross section so in a cross section by cross section layered manner this printing process will take place and you will see the part getting formed in the downward direction as 
the build platform is descending the advantages here is that it is uh, very high precision as here we are not printing with the powder but uh, we are directing with lasers which have very high accuracies so high intricate shapes can be formed here further the powder that is not used in a particular cross section can be reused so it is a recyclable process and this is a appropriate process for printing entire uh, assemblies for example if we have to fabricate a uh, lock and a key if we go by the conventional routes we will first fabricate the individual components of the lock then we will assemble them and then we will uh, fabricate the invert uh, the key for the lock and then we will do the assembly in case of additive manufacturing through powder bit fusion route we can print a lock with the key inserted in it uh, in one step so that is the precision and that is the level of accuracy we can get by the use of uh, this powder bit uh, fusion but the disadvantages are that the surface finish is poor even though the precision is high so uh, it may call for some finishing operation and since we are dealing with metal powders which are in the size of maybe a few hundred microns so it is not very uh, good for your health so these powders are categorized in as carcinogenic powders therefore appropriate safety standards needs to be followed while dealing with powder bit fusion technologies the next set of technology would include a sheet lamination process so as the name suggests we start off by creating profiles on the particular sheet then the sheets are rolled off and individual layers of the sheets are glued together to finally form the final part so the advantages of this technique is that it is a very high speed and low cost method of realizing uh, prototypes and because of the ease of material handling this is appropriately suited for the development of uh, prototypes but the strength of the part will be poor as it will be uh, largely depending upon the adhesive that we use therefore these are not used for fabricating full fledged geometries or the final parts and also the material compatibility causes a issue so uh, with respect to this we have to uh, the materials which can be printed here are classified so the next two technologies uh, material jetting and vat polymerization here we are using liquid as the input material as you can see from the animation here it is very resembling to a normal inkjet printer that you see so the print head will be jetting the material onto a build platform in a continuous or a drop on demand approach which is very much analogous to inkjet printing and because of its individual channels of printing plus the ability to add uh, certain colors these are advantageous in printing colored objects here the material wastage is very minimal as we are only dropping the material where it is required and we also end up in very high surface finish but uh, the disadvantages are that the build process is very time consuming and it is compatible with very limited set of materials but looking at a application for such colored objects we can find a good range of application of such technologies in fabricating complex models for educational purposes for example if we have to understand the structure of a human heart or let's say if you have to understand uh, uh, assembly of a space satellite so these are complicated assemblies and inkjet printing could help in fabricating colored model which would help in better understanding the parts for our own understanding so the last uh, process here is the vat photo polymerization so this is again a liquid based 3d printing process where we are providing a heat source to selectively polymerize a resin so this resin is photosensitive so through photo polymerization we will be forming some solid chunks in the resins which are then uh, as you can see the resin layer is going down as the part is being lifted up and once this part is created then it is cured with uv to give it some appropriate strength the advantage of this kind of printing is it can yield up in very high uh, degree of detail and precision 
and the overall quality of the part and also it is a very quick way of realizing parts but the disadvantages are that the material are very limited for this because of uh, this photo polymerization phenomena and it is a very costly material plus uh, it is a very costly process and the yielded parts have a tendency to get deformed if are not stored properly so if they are exposed to certain uv lights or certain heat uh, certain high intensity energy sources there are chances of uh, causing deformation so now we will talk about why do we need to learn about additive manufacturing processes so as we see that they find a wide range of application in industry as well as uh, research plus they give Uh, so this is uh, the share of market share of am technologies as of 2022 further they allow us to build parts that are otherwise not possible through other uh, manufacturing routes thus they provide a lot of flexibility in design and some of the examples would include like if we have to print a sphere under a sphere this is not possible by any traditional manufacturing route further it allows for materials like uh, what you see in the second figure is a lattice material so these are again a nature inspired design which is very optimized with respect to the use of material without compromising on the functional need so such geometries are only possible through these routes uh, another example would be conformational cooling channels so through conventional means we can only deal we only deal with the traditional uh, geometries that would uh, be the primitive geometries but additive manufacturing provides us the flexibility to use our creativity and uh, form better functional parts the third point would be since we are using material exactly where it is needed so it is a sustainable uh, way of manufacturing things and definitely it is one of the technologies which is uh, going to play a larger role in the future and therefore learning about these technologies is a good way of future proofing our skills and keeping ourselves relevant in the coming ages so now i will quickly go through the different applications to better understand how diversified this uh, technology is at the moment so these find a large number of examples in biomedical engineering especially with the prosthetic arms the surgical implants and pharmaceuticals so with respect to pharmaceuticals additive manufacturing have been proven to be very effective since the shape of the drug determines its effectiveness therefore for prototyping as well as drug development additive manufacturing uh, is something that is heavily invested and has yielded appropriate results also in pharmaceutical industries then you can see we can realize entire rocket engines through a single print model and these uh, rocket engines are provided with this conformational conformal cooling channel that is you are providing the cooling channel as per the object geometry to better optimize its functionality so such structures are only possible through am technologies then we have lattice material then we have topology optimized lightweight brackets so these find a lot of application in aerospace application we also have 3d printed bridges and 3d printed emergency houses and roofing structures which could uh, prove very beneficial in relief operations and then we have the applications in the electronic sectors where it is uh, we can uh, 3d printing is being used for fabricating ic chips as well as semiconductors we find the application in textile and fashion industries where 3d printing could be used as a tool which is appropriate for mass customization thus for producing on demand and tailored clothing footwear and other objects then definitely in manufacturing industries because of its uh, ability to realize assemblies and its ability to provide personalized mass customized solutions to the current day manufacturing problems so now there is no such optimal method which or there is no such single method which will solve all our problems 
therefore it becomes very important for us to first of all realize when to use additive manufacturing and then to subsequently answer which process to finally opt for so here i have presented a few topics a few points which you have to consider while choosing for this so the strength of this technology lies in offering personalized goods with minimal wastage and it aids in creating designs which are otherwise not possible so where these conditions are primary we have to switch to additive manufacturing but for the parts which are very generic in nature and are produced at large scales this may not be the best route to go about it similarly the opportunities and threats for this technology are listed here since it is a relatively new technology so there are not uh, detailed standards that are available for product development and qualification as compared to the traditional processes but it is in a evolving stage and it has as you can see all the 3d printing technologies have been picking up uh, in their applications both in terms of in their academia development research development as well as their industrial application so the simplest answer is when to use the additive manufacturing is to look at the cost benefit and the novelty so there are certain structures which cannot be simply printed or can be realized through other route so there we have to go for 3d printing for the parts which are possible to realize through both traditional as well as additive manufacturing route we have to consider the production volume and the product complexity to determine the appropriate break even point and then assess whether this technology is useful so the last two sections so these are some skills that you can develop in order to future proof yourself uh, in the upcoming age of this new manufacturing technology you should have a sound understanding of at least one programming language some cad package Uh, some basic functioning knowledge of the em technologies and lasers these are the books that i would recommend you in this domain and these are some excellent online resources that are available the first nptel course talk about the basic fundamental process and the technical uh, know how of this process while the second process rather looks into the industry applications and entrepreneurship opportunities of this process further there are some coursera courses also which specifically addresses in the change in design philosophies with respect to additive manufacturing uh, technologies and definitely uh, the more you can also follow the additive manufacturing dot media to keep yourself updated with the de- recent developments in the technology so the last i would like to talk about the opportunity so in terms of research opportunity opportunity there are a lot of areas that this technology covers upon and it is omnipresent it is applicable in civil chemical then mechanical metallurgical even computer science and electronics anywhere where you are fabricating hardware so there are a lot of areas to research upon from numerical studies to experimental studies these are some of the industries that have already established and the best way to learn about this process is the hands way approach so if you are looking for some projects in this domain these are a particular uh, parties that you can approach to and definitely there is a large possibility of uh, entrepreneurship and in fact in the past 5 years there have been numerous startups uh, around 3d printing technologies that are catering uh, to the market needs so we have startups in the biomedical field we have startups in manufacturing field we have 3d printing consulting startups which uh guide and helps uh, other companies to better identify where they can integrate 3d printing in their supply chains to optimize their process and we also have startups like trust additive which helps you uh, to make your own companies and provide uh, it provides you with the necessary consulting and <coughs> the financial services uh, in order to uh, form your own company around this th- uh, in the realm of 3d printing manufacturing uh, so if it, with that i welcome you on board on the science and art of giving form to creative ideas to shape for a greener smarter and more sustainable tomorrow so thank you very much and all the very best
Yeah, thank you, sir. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, and participants, the participants are asking some questions. Okay, yeah, the sure. first question, uh, the Gridesh Shankar Dribari asking, what materials are commonly used in different AM processes? Yeah, so I have presented that in this slide. Let me go back. Yeah, whether my slide is visible? Yeah, yes. Yes. So these are the seven uh, basic uh, manufacturing processes that are listed in AM. And these are the set of materials. So you can see thermoplastic, photopolymers, metals, ceramics, composite, biomaterials, multi-materials. When we talk of metals, uh, it would cover from nickel, copper, aluminium, stainless steels, titanium alloys. Uh, for ceramics, there are certain carbides. So based on your application, you can look for a certain material. It could be possible that a particular carbide is not currently developed for printing, but you might be able to find alternative ceramics that could solve the purpose. So this comprehensively list out the different materials that could be printed out through this technology. Okay. So the next one, uh, Kautilya Uttargas asking, uh, will AM ever be able to produce large structures such as an aircraft wing? If so, what's needed to make this happen? Actually, with the help of AM, we have been able to create not only... Uh, the answer, simple answer is yes to that. So if you look at the application of AIM, let me go quickly go to that slide. Yeah. So uh, there are bridges that have been fabricated through AIM and uh, there are also emergency housings, offices, modular housings uh, the in fact in united states if you look there are startups that are offering apartments that are created through this technology the challenges here is uh, you can you have to go for a robotic arm type printer which will provide you flexibility for printing over the larger range and also the materials that you'll be dealing with you cannot use materials that are oxygen sensitive or that requires a confined atmosphere but with respect to concrete and steels, this is a proven technology. And for aircraft parts, as you say, so that only, there is not a limitation in terms of the process or the physics. That is already established. The limitation exists only in terms of building the machines. And whatever machines that also that are coming in today's ages, these are customizable. So if you want to go on to print, let's say, entire wing structure in one go, you will have to appropriately modify the build platform and your uh, working nozzles to accommodate for the printed structure. Otherwise, there is no such uh, physical limitation or the process limitation for realizing such structure. Yeah, okay. thank you, sir. Sir, what, uh, em sir, what emerging materials and technologies hold the most promise for the future of additive manufacturing? So the future of additive manufacturing will not be in one particular domain. It is a, it is a disruptive technology and it has brought in innovation in a lot large number of fields, primarily biomedical, aerospace, civil, electronics, particular materials that I would... Uh, so in terms of the future, the future will be based off two things. First will be the, the changes that will be brought in through design. So with respect to additive manufacturing, now we can realize functionally graded material, we can realize porous material, we can realize lattice material. So these will be driving the design aspect of this technology. And that design will be also covered in offering personalized prosthetic solutions as these will be personalized to one's need. And then there is a second element to it that is in terms of the materials that will be covered. So with the emerging technologies, we have printed uh, bio, biological tissues. In fact, biological organs have been printed. Now, the future will be in, uh, in order to scale up these technologies and bring the cost down to find more players that come in and fill in the technology market gaps. So in a nutshell, the future is bright. 
from a design perspective as well as from a science perspective yeah okay thank you sir uh, this is my last question uh, how would additive manufacturing revolutions the healthcare industry and particularly in personalized medicine yeah so i think the best example would be the pharmaceuticals since uh, the drug delivery system in our body uh, the receptors shape plays a critical role in determining whether the drug will be attaching to that point or not so because of additive manufacturing technologies at nano printing at micro printing levels we have a very strong level of control over realizing precise geometries at nano levels so in terms of drug delivery it will play a big role in terms of surgical implants where uh, you have to have a particular part tailored to one person's geometry uh, which will be very specific and very personalized so additive manufacturing is going to play a big role and in terms of prosthetics it is already incorporated but uh, if you look about the future now at r&d level there are uh, experiments where certain human organs have been printed so it maybe it is too futuristic for now but it can also cater to the organ uh, department where we are struggling to find donors and the correct uh, compatible organs additive manufacturing can fill in in making those parts and reducing our dependencies yeah okay so thank you sir thank you for the answers the answers is very useful i hope the access and the, the participants can understand about that and finally sir so on behalf of everyone sorry behalf of our organization and all the attendees i extend our heartfelt gratitude to mr ibun nail for his invaluable contribution to today's session on additive manufacturing past present and future mr nay your expertise and insights have not only enlightened us but also inspired a deeper interest and understanding of the transformative potential of additive manufacturing technologies uh, your detailed exploration of the subject from its historical roots to the cutting edge advancements and future possibilities has provided us uh, with a um, comprehensive overview of the field so your passion for, for innovation commitment to developing smart and sustainable solutions and dedication to uh, mentoring the next generation of engineers are truly commendable so thank you mr nail for taking the time to share your knowledge and experiences with us and your contributions to uh, aerospace applications and additive manufacturing at large or making a marked difference in the field so we look forward to witnessing your continued achievements and hopefully I uh, have the honor of learning from you again in the future please accept our sincere appreciation for your remarkable presentation and for inspiring us all to explore innovate and contribute to the advancement of additive manufacturing so thank you sir thank you so much yeah thank you very much for the opportunity and i wish you all the best there is uh, something to learn i believe for everyone attending here and i feel that i through my presentation if i am able to generate a uh, a couple of in, uh, topic of interesting ideas in you to pick up on i think uh, the purpose is solved i best uh, i wish you all the very best in your end of yours thank you very much thank you sir thank you sir